lifelong partnership for a lovebird. Well, David, I have uh, one simple question for you. What's up? <laughs> That would be the sky, Richard. The sky is <laughs> Indeed up. it would. Tell us more about it. Uh, I had a lovely afternoon uh, with my young nephew, Harry, who's uh, five, and uh, we were doing a little bit of cloud watching and imagining what shapes were in the clouds. And I started thinking about the sky, and up there we have, in, within about 17 kilometres from the Earth's surface, that is all troposphere. And tropos comes from the Greek meaning to change or turn. And that's because the climate is very changeable. Uh, clouds will scud across, uh, storms can move in. Now further up is the stratosphere, where things are more stable, and that comes from the Latin stratus, meaning spread out, where we get such words as strata. Um, and so then, we think of strata as kind of layers, don't we? It's almost like a kind of condominium <laughs> of, uh, of air. <laughs> now we also, thinking of layers, we also think of that, and um, we've heard obviously a great deal about, the ozone layer. Now where is that, and is ozone something to do with oxygen zone? It, it, look, it uh, conceivably is, and it is that sort of very outer layer that protects the uh, Earth from um, UV rays. And it uh, actually was coined by a German uh, chemist in 1840, and it, uh, it looks like oxygen zone, but it actually comes from German, meaning O-sign, O-Z-E-I-N, which is German for smell. And uh, if after a thunderstorm, all you need to do is just smell that incredible supercharged oxygen that, um, that is ozone, you can understand the link between ozone and a strong uh, pungence. Very atmospheric segment. Thank you very much, David. <laughs> Thank you. Let's have a look at our scores. Jack is a uh, very strong leader at this early stage of the game on 23 points. So uh, let's hope Seb gets into scoring action in this series of games, the first of which is our third letters game. And uh, Seb, make a choice, please. Thank you. Well, I think we'll start with a consonant this time, please, Lily. Thanks, Seb. M. And maybe one more consonant, please. L. And a vowel, please. I. And a consonant, please. P. And one more consonant, please. T. And a vowel, please. O. And one more vowel, please. E. And another vowel, please. I. And let's finish with a vowel. And <laughs> last letter, A. Thanks, Lily. I'll start the clock. Did you like that mix? Well, hopefully. How uh, many for you? A seven for me. That sounds very, uh, very much like a good response. Jack? Uh, just six. Okay, let's go with your six. Uh, polite. And your seven, seven. Uh, Epitome. Epitome. Now, there's a nice word, David. Mm, mm. How do you spell it, though, Seb? Uh, <laughs> E-P-I-T-O-M-E. Yeah, unfortunately, you're one E short. There's only one E there oh. in that mix. Oh. Um, which takes Sorry us back that. to Jack with polite. Now, had you been a little ruder and added an I-N oh, as course. the prefix impolite could have been a possible eight there for you, as it is polite is a strong six. Well, no, we don't think it's, it's, it's worthwhile being rude occasionally. <laughs> because you <laughs> score more, don't you? Actually, rudeness scores. <laughs> Thank you, David. Six points to Jack. 29 total. On to our next letters game. And, uh, well, you know now that you need to be impolite through the, uh, the whole game from now on, Jack. What would Seven. you like this time? OK, Lily, well, give us a consonant. <laughs> <laughs> D. And a vowel, please. E. And a consonant, please. N. Uh, another consonant, please. Another D. A uh, vowel, please. A. Uh, consonant, please. T. A uh, vowel, please. I. And a consonant, please. C. And a vowel, please. And last letter, E. Here's the clock.
time and did you get that time? Uh, seven that time, Richard. That sounds very good. What about you, Seb? Well, hopefully seven for me as well. Let's hope so. In fact, let's check straight away. Uh, enacted. Thank you. Jack? Uh, enticed. And enticed, David? A couple of nice M words. Lovely sevens. And in fact, Seb, I understand you have a little bit of a background in uh, amateur theatre as well. Yes. Uh, and enacted has uh, come to the fore. So well done. Good seven on the board. And enticed, of course, also good for seven. Anything bigger or better for me, from you, David? Well, I was detained with this mix. That's one eight. And decadent is another eight that I found. And that uh, means sort of morally uh, bankrupt and comes from decadare, which means to fall. So to fall to an inferior position. Lovely word, though. Thank you, David. And uh, seven points each that time for Jack and Seb. Great to see Seb hitting the scoreboard, and uh, let's see if he can consolidate the tradition with the numbers. What Thanks, combinations would you like? Uh, I think I'd like two large and four small, please. Thanks, Seb. Two large and four small numbers. And starting with the small numbers, six, eight, nine, ten. And the two large, 50 and 75. And the target to reach is 267. Thanks, Lily. Let's chase that target. How close did you get that time? I think I got 263. 263, four off the target. Jack? Uh, 267. You are right on the target once again. You finished a little bit early. So take us through your approach, please. Start with 10 minus 6. 10 minus 6 is 4. four. Yeah, times 50. By the 50. It's 200. 200. Uh, plus 75. Add, 275. Add the 75 is 275. Minus the 8, 267. Minus the 8. 267. Lovely method. Very well done, Jack. What was your approach, Lily? Now, 75 minus 50 is 25. 25 by the 10 is 250. And if you add the 9 and add the 8, is 267. Oh, we've got your version with a lovely version too. They're all great. They're all great. Look, great result once again for Jack. 46 points after 10 in that round. Let's head for another break and another word mix for you. Naff bout. And the clue this time, puffy French. See you in a moment.